I'd like to call to order the uh, Bloomington Historic Preservation Commission meeting for uh, Thursday, March 28th, 2024. Um, we need a roll call. Okay. Marlene Newman, Ernesto Castaneda, Daniel Schlegel. Here. Sam DeSoller. Here. Ashley Johnson. Present. John Saunders. Here. Elizabeth Mitchell. William Folk. Present. Reynard Cross. He is virtual. Yeah. Um, Duncan Campbell. Here. Kristen Hawley. Here, Karen Duffy. Here. Jeremy Hacker. Here. All right, thank you. Um, so we need approval of our minutes from February 22nd. I'd like to approve with the caveat that uh, the first question on the, on the Cascades, uh, uh, what's the word, designation was attributed to me and not to Commissioner uh, Hackard. He asked a good question, it wasn't me. Question on that. It's now being written by AI or something. They, they seem no. like they're taking off a tape recording or the minutes. I do I do the minutes and I did them from the transcript of the meeting uh, because this was my first meeting with the Zoom and that sort of thing. Uh, I've got my computer here and I'm going to go back to the old way and try to do them during the meeting. So I apologize if they looked a little it different. It just seemed like there were breaks in the syntax and some of the there, sentences. And yeah, some there, of the sentences end into into another sentence, and I mean, I didn't go through the whole thing to yeah. try to come up with corrections because yeah. I didn't want to take the time, frankly. But yeah, I think the content was there, but it was hard to read sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't disagree mm -hmm. with that. But yeah, I want to go back to doing it the old way and do the minutes during the meeting. Yeah, we've had some. Uh, people switching out in our staff, so um, Eddie's had to pick up a little bit of slack there, and uh, mm, that's got caught up in a lot of the other stuff you're taking care of. All right, so. All right. Um, Eddie, you want to do the roll call? Do we have a motion and a second? Uh, I have a motion. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll second. Very good, okay. thank you, Ashley. Uh, same. Oh, so the motion, the only caveat was that there was a question at the beginning of the lower cascades right. uh, nomination. nomination thank you uh, that was attributed to me which was actually uh, commissioner hackard like the first thing right after noah gave the presentation yes thank you okay all right no problem uh, yeah we can fix that okay uh daniel schlegel yes Sam DeSoller? Yes. Ashley Johnson? Yes. Yeah. William Folk? Yes. John Saunders? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Great. Thank you, Eddie. All right, let's move on to COAs. And uh, uh, COA 24-05 right. was a staff review. So and this is another place where I'd like to uh, issue uh, Correction, this is to uh, what I put in the packet. Um, the commission had not uh, denied COA. There was conditional approval of the COA. Um, and this uh, staff approval reflects the fact that um, we've since got um, a proposal from the petitioner that basically describes how the fence is going to be built along the lines of what we looked at in the previous meeting. Um, but fence heights are going to be reduced to four feet along uh the road where that variance is required great okay. thank you Noah. Mm -hmm. so let's move on to commission review coa-2406 oh, 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 yeah. oh sorry i don't know who's in charge of that part but mm -hmm. yeah Two. 
Mm -hmm. Can we just love technology? Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm not getting the got it. Um, you're not getting the got it. Yeah, it's not anymore. There it is, yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that does it. All right, no, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Let's move on to COA 24-06. The COA 24-06, um, this is proposed for 913 West 4th Street in the Greater Prospect Hill Historic District. Um, petitioner is Sam DeSolar, and the request is for adding a rear addition to a gable dell structure. And the proposed addition, uh, staff finds that the proposed addition would not have, oops, um, let's see. this okay um, the proposed addition would not impact the building's primary northern facade or have an excessive impact on the building's massing the vinyl window pr proposed will match the existing vinyl windows and the fiber cement lap siding mats meets district guidelines uh, members of the neighborhood construction committee have also expressed their approval of the proposed design so staff recommends approval here are some of the uh, emails that I received from members of the Greater Prospect Hills Design Subcommittee um, expressing uh, their thoughts after having a look over the uh, proposed design. Terrific. And our petitioners with us. And the owners mm -hmm. here, too. Okay. So, uh, uh, Sam, do you have anything to add? Um, I be happy to walk you through it. Basically, the, the main facade is untouched, and it's all going along the back side of the, uh, of the site. We're basically extruding the house, keeping the same profile, uh, the same siding, uh, <clears throat> and the same roof line. Uh, just removing the back porch, the back stoop, and then uh, just enlarging the, the house to the uh, south. Okay. Um, I'd be okay. happy to take any questions and I think okay. we, do you have anything to add? Great. So let's, uh, I can't ask you. Uh, uh, I'll myself on this. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, do you have any questions? Um, how, Jeremy? How far back is this going? Uh, it's going back an additional, I think, nine feet. Uh, and the lot itself is ridiculously deep. Uh, if you there's yeah. a there's a if you go to there's a drawing that was included in the packet uh, showing the site plan. Um, that should also be in. Uh, yeah, that will be in the packet. Uh, so it's not up on the it's not in the presentation. Twenty seven looks like. Right. Oh, well, I did Let's submit see. one in the in the submittal, but um, th this, this I have it here in the packet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the one okay. that you're looking that shows the extended lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So That's the house page. itself is maybe the, the front fifth mm -hmm. of the, um, mm -hmm. it's on page 27 of the packets, x.0. Uh, and then the, the proposed bit is maybe another nine or ten feet back from the existing, uh, the existing uh, dining room. No question. Daniel? No. Karen? No question. Thank you. Um, so uh, I have a quick question. So uh, will the roofing material match to what's there existing, or are you going to change everything? That's the, the thought is to uh, match as closely as possible the existing. It's a comp shingle roof, and we're not going to rewrite anything. OK. Good. Thank you, Sam. Renard, do you have any questions? Uh, can we unmute Mar Menard? We're working on that. Renard, can you hear us? Sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I think he's. He's in Jamaica, so I don't know. Right. I asked you to, to unmute, but it's. Yeah, for 
for him to vote, he's going to have to be able to be seen and heard. Right. Okay. We'll have to get Renard fixed here. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, let's do the comments. Ashley, any comments? He says he's seen the screen, but he's not getting video or audio. Yeah. The, the okay. Oh, so we've seen my screen share. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's sending email. Okay. So is, is anybody okay. sharing audio? Uh, does anybody have their mic on in the meeting? Uh, well, the owl mic is supposed right. to be on. So it looks like it's muted on the far left of that screen. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's red. It's red. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, somebody's got their speakers on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Did that work? We'll see I'm muted. I'm muted. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I should have my speakers in mute. And thanks. You know me, Daniel. <laughs> I, think, I think somebody's computer audio laying me on. Oh, you're. Mine's not. You're not. Okay. Uh, Renard, can you hear us? I can hear you, but I can't see anybody. Okay, none of us have our, uh, it's, okay. we're sharing the screen, but none of us have our cameras on. I can turn it on if that helps. There. There we go. I can see you now. Great. Yay! Yay! All right. Hey, Renard, do you have any questions? Um, no, because up until this point, I couldn't see or hear anything. I could only see the screen. I could hear any of the conversation. Oh, okay. Do you want us to go through it again? No. I'll, for the purpose of keeping things moving, I'll just skip this one. I can hear it now, so I'll contribute from now on. All right, great. Thank you. So I think we were moving on to comments. Ashley didn't have any comments, and Jeremy didn't have any comments, and Bill doesn't. No, nope. no. Nope. Looks good to me. Duncan. I, you know, I, I just want to say it's a it's a really clean presentation. That, I mean, I, I know Sam sits here with us and knows how to do this, but I just to point out to everybody else, this is the kind of information we need. It's simple. It's straightforward. It's very direct about how it hits standards and how it doesn't. And he's shown what's going to be removed, what's going to be replaced, what's going to be added. It's, it's, you know, it's just exactly what we want to see. And it's not to mention a good design. Thank you. Um, I don't have any uh, comments on this particular project. Uh, we need a, a motion to approve. So I'll make a motion to approve. I lost the COA, though. COA. Oh, it's COA 24-06. Uh, 24-06. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Second. Thank you, Bill. All right. Daniel Schlegel. Yes. Sam DeSoller. Abstain. Ashley Johnson. Yeah. John Saunders. Yes. William Falk. Yes. Motion carries 4-0-1. All right, thank you, Eddie. Uh, let's move on to COA 24-07. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Is that the question with this thing? Tim? Yes. Okay, very good. Okay. Just want to make sure you're here. All right. All right, mm -hmm. All right. Um, um, go ahead and do it. Did Renard vote? Um, he can't. I know. Well, he's not attending. He's person. not here in person. You can't vote if you're here, if you're a member right. of the commission on Zoom. Right. Yeah. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. All right. It's up okay. to you now, Noah, to go ahead and do a um, COA 24-07 uh, for 200 East Kirkwood. This is the Bloomington National Savings and Loan Association Historic District. And the petitioner is Tim Cover. 
uh, the request is to amend COA 2384, which I've included some information from in your packet, um, to add two additional windows to the west facade, uh, which is shown here in its current state. Um, staff recommends approval of COA 2407, since the new windows would match historic windows in both design and rhythm and do not alter the character of the historic bank building's secondary western elevation. Um, so this image is taken from the uh, previous, this is 2384 uh, um, COA, but you can see um, the one change that's been requested is the addition of two windows in the western elevation. Um, if I switch back, you can see where there's a break between a set of four windows, um, a couple of bays with no windows, then a set of one over the other. Uh, this petition would add an additional set of two windows that match the existing windows on the facade. Um, here, this is from a uh, packet prepared by the National Park Service, albeit for uh, tax credit applications, but um, they sort of present a gold standard for uh, historic rehabilitation projects. Um, and this case pertains to the additions of new openings on secondary elevations. Uh, this is an example of a project that was approved that added a uh, new windows to a historic structure um, where there had previously been very few windows on the secondary facade. Um, judging off of this precedent, um, I don't see an issue with the proposed amendment to the COA. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Tim, do you have some additional information for us? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, come on. Yeah. to spin around to hear what I'm talking about. Uh, so you guys, many of you have seen me for about two years now <laughs> uh, working on this project. So we are, we are actually finally close to being ready to start. We got a construction package going out next week. Uh, so what I would love to do is be able to include basically these two windows. The reason we're asking for those, uh, what we are working on is a, a basically a boutique hotel. Uh, in the location of this window, there's a, a room that is basically this box, and it has a notch to catch these two windows in the corner. What uh, the hotel world likes to call that is a vampire room. Uh, because there's not a window that is really kind of lighting the room up. And so adding the additional windows to the side basically brings a window more directly in line with the room itself. Uh, that's why we're asking to do this, uh, how we would do it. Uh, you'll, you'll notice in the existing drawing and then in this drawing, uh, there's limestone panels here that would line up. So our idea is basically to cut right down the, the joint line, uh, remove those panels, salvage them, cut our windows in, there's block back up behind that, and then put the panels back in place. Uh, top panel would remain the same, but then uh, we would wind up cutting the intermediate panels the current setup, as you go down the line, this intermediate area is recessed about an inch, and the panels are cut into three horizontal pieces. We can match it, or if you prefer to see it different, we can put um, you know, basically two panels in. It's too tall for one panel to sit in there. Um, but the intent currently is that we would set three panels matching the existing setup and recess those back that inch, similar to the rest of them, so you'd have that same shadow line. 
the sills on the windows. We have windows on the other side that we're removing so that we can take that those same stone sills and and use those at these windows so again everything carries the same character um, so that's basically how we would do it what we're looking to do if uh, from a standpoint of you know there's two uh, worlds of thought one is you you make it like the rest the other is it was never there before you make it very different um, we could do that if that is the propose or desire and do more of a you know just a simple storefront opening and not try and match the historic windows um, all of these windows along here as part of the coa we are replacing those with replica aluminum windows uh, we're working with a group called saint cloud out of uh, minneapolis i believe minnesota um, that kind of fabricates a custom window, that, but it's going to be an insulated unit, which was the main thing. Everything along here was single pane and um, has been uh, in bad shape for a while. <laughs> but anyway, so again, we can make all of that uh, just match the other 10, or if there's a strong preference, we could easily change the look. But the overall the big ask is obviously to be able to cut those two new openings in. So with that, I'll send it to questions if you have any. All right, thanks, Tim. Um, Duncan, do you have questions? Nope. Okay. Sam, questions? No questions, no questions actually? Jeremy? Um, what can you do to mitigate any sort of damage to limestone around where you want? Uh, that is why we are we're looking at basically cutting the, the uh, grout joint out in terms of being able to, to get gain access. I mean, once you take the window out, then you can start getting behind it, hopefully, to cut any anchor off. Um, and again, our intent would be we're going to salvage panels and to put back. Um, we are on the flip side, removing stone in different areas that we're also going to salvage as far as for if we had any damage or if we have any areas that we need to infill uh, to be able to do that and keep all the same material. After it's all done, then we're coming through and we're cleaning all the stone. No questions? Daniel. I think you answered my questions as fast as I could think of them, so great presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Karen? No questions. Uh, same here. The other questions got asked before it got to me. Um, so let's move on to comments. Duncan? What about that? Oh, I'm sorry. Renard, you're hiding. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Duncan? Uh, well, in, I guess in, in response to the Tim's question about whether to make them distinctly different from the Normally that rule applies when you're retaining historic material. And so what you're basically gonna do is you're gonna match all these replacement windows with another replacement window. You know, and so if the, if if those all those other windows were original in their original places and you were adding that would be a replica, then I would that. I would suggest some very subtle difference, maybe a solid panel beneath instead of a recessed one or something like that. But I think once you once you start to take the historic material away, that assumption of a rule of distinction doesn't really okay. is kind of moot. So I, I personally would would just put them all put them in there exactly the same way because you're replacing them all really. Thank you, Duncan. Um, Karen, any comments? I think it looks very nice. It, it satisfies my need for a sense of balance there to add those windows. Thank you. Daniel? I, I agree with Karen. I, I like the, the balance, but I, I like the idea of the making it look like the rest. That way it has that, mm -hmm. that nice yes. feel. Mm -hmm. So, my two cents. Bill? Yeah I, yeah, I agree with most of what's been said here. I think this looks much better uh, with the additional windows. I agree with sure. making it blend in with the rest of the windows. 
Yeah. I agree with what's been said. All right. Sam? Yeah, I think the new windows are a reflection of the new program of the building, and it's you know it's a chance for this historic building to have a new life, and if that makes it more economically viable and you know gives it a better chance of happening, then I don't have any qualms about supporting it. Thank you, Bernard. Um. I think it looks good. I'm always in favor of more windows than these work, so <laughs> okay with it. All right, thanks, Bernard. I don't have any additional comments uh, to make. It's a fine project. I'm anxious to see you guys get it going and how it turns out. Um, so we need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. All right. That to you, Eddie. So real quick before I do roll call, so. Reynard can or cannot vote. I don't believe no, if he can be seen and heard. And heard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I just I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Thanks for seeing and hearing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I just wanted to be clear on that. Okay. Daniel Schlegel. Yes. Sam DeSaller. Yes. Ashley Johnson. Yes. John Saunders. Yes. William Falk. Yes. Reynard Cross. Yes. Okay. Motion carries 6 0. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank we're you. Excited Tim. to get it rolling. It's, oh. Yeah, we're anxious. When are you going to break ground? I'm sorry. When are you guys starting? Um, if permitting goes smoothly, hopefully uh, basically midsummer. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Okay. Let's move on to demolition delays. Uh, demolition delays, and this is uh, another uh, part of the packet uh, where I've had to make a change. Um, the second demolition delay that came up, uh, 2411 uh, building permit, uh, was not obtained in time for um, the petitioner to present a sign outside of their building. So that one is going to have to be delayed to our next meeting. Um, so in effect, that's a demolition delay, but we're not voting on it. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. The first one, um, 2303 South Rockport Road, petitioner is Candy Sipes. The request is for the full demolition delay of a house and a wooden car shed. Um, oh, staff comments are not in there. Okay. Um, so the house that you see there was constructed in 1925. It's a hipped roof, one-story cottage with an inset off-center front porch. Um, the house has replacement doors, windows, and aluminum siding, but otherwise the uh, shape and the fenestration of the house have changed very little. There are two other uh, historic structures on the site, including a 1940 wooden front gabled car shed um, in the next slide here, and a 1950 gambrel roofed barn with concrete and wood siding uh, that is not proposed to be demolished. Um, staff recommends release of demo delay 2410. Uh, Sam, any questions? Any questions? Ashley? The barn that's staying, it, can that be seen behind the car shed? in that photograph up on the side. It's not easily visible from the street. Um, the car shed is right to the left mm -hmm. of the house, I believe. Um, so, uh, so the barn, is that right. behind it? Yeah, the okay. barn is behind it. Um, you can kind of make it out from the street, but um, right now it's mostly obscured. Okay. Back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeremy? Is this in a historic preservation district? No. Okay. It's a contributing structure um, that's outside of any district. Okay. No question. Okay. Daniel. No. Karen? No. Duncan? No questions here. Uh, comments? Um, Renard, I'm going to keep forgetting you. Uh, no questions. <laughs> Sorry. All right, yeah. <laughs> we moved on to comments. So, uh, any comments, Sam? Ashley? No. 
Jeremy, no. No. Bill. I think it's not in a district, just um, um, for you know some of these historic buildings like this. Um, I like seeing you know as much as we can to keep that character of our town alive. So but that's all I've got. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. No comments. Um, so I guess we, do we need a, a movement? A motion to move on to demolition or just go with demolition? Mm -hmm. Does Renard have I'm sorry, Renard, do you have any comments? Uh, no comments. So, Renard, are you in Jamaica? Yes. Yes, I okay. am. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us from Jamaica. I appreciate yeah. it. And I'll it's try to... It's really, really hot here. <laughs> to... oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking us up. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, you're going to miss the eclipse. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm coming back oh. on uh, next week Wednesday. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, I'll go ahead and, and read it. You and half a million other people. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. What do we got here? Okay, um, today regarding the property located at 2303 South Rockport Road, the Historic Preservation, Historic Preservation Commission uh, got notice of proposed demolition and uh, let's see, uh, we don't need a formal report. All right, sorry guys, I'm reading the wrong one. Uh, today, regarding the property located at 2306 03. 03 South Rockport Road, um, the Historic Preservation Commission declares that it got notice of proposed demolition and after today's discussion sees no need to review any plans any further and waives the rest of the demolition delay waiting period. The HPC may later recommend the property for historic designation to the Common Council. So been approved? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Good. New business. New business. Do we have a vote? Take a vote. Well, we got a vote. Yes, we got a vote. I'm not having yeah, a good day, guys. I'm really sorry. You're good. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, 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 it's these drugs I take. Seriously. Daniel Schlegel? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes means. Yes means to release. Yeah, yes means to release. Okay. Yes. Sam DeSoller? Yes. Ashley Johnson? Yes. Yeah. John Saunders? Yes. William Falk? Yes. Raynard Cross? Yes. Okay. Motion carries 6 0. Very good. Okay, so we're in the new business now. Right. Very good. Okay. Rose Miller, Rosemary Miller lecture. Uh, the Rosemary Miller lecture on uh, Nancy Heller is back on. Um, speaker is going to be. Hey. Speaker is going to be uh, Duncan Campbell, and it's going to be at the council chambers at City Hall. Um, so that's back on for May twenty fourth of twenty twenty four. Um, many of us knew Nancy. Um, she was remarkable and for more reasons than you know just her contributions to preservation um, and her dedication to keeping arts and crafts, uh, carpentry and serious craftsmanship alive. Um, so I encourage you all to show up for that. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Duncan? No, other than that it's postponed for a year because I got sick the night before it was supposed to start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got COVID the day before it was supposed to happen. So mm -hmm. we had to put it off. Okay. Thank you, Noah. And then you want to do a uh, uh, number B on our uh, new business? Sure. It is a photo contest. Right. Um, so some of you may remember um, in 2022, there was another historic preservation photo contest uh, that um, that took place under Gloria's tenure, and I'd like to 
put together a subcommittee of volunteers from the commission. Um, it could be anyone voting or non-voting members uh, who would be interested in judging entries. And another thing I'd like to discuss is whether um, we'd like to have any specific theme to the contest. Um, for instance, if we want to relate it to uh, the Nancy Hiller talk, have something about uh, the arts and crafts movement or um, something else that you think is pertinent to uh, the state of preservation in Bloomington. So um, I'd like to open up to comments and questions about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do, what do you guys think about this upcoming, about doing the photo contest and what kind of theme uh, we want to have? Uh, and of course, we know Nancy Hiller's background mm -hmm. uh, with arts and crafts movement and stuff. And, uh, have we done themes in the past? Those? What's that? Have there been themes for the for photo contest in the past? Uh, I can't remember. Themes have been proposed in the past, but uh, I believe the last one, which was the last one for a while, um, there ultimately wasn't a theme. Mm -hmm. So it isn't necessary, but if anybody wants to bring one up. I think the theme mm -hmm. of the last one, Mill North, it had to be historic. Uh, it had to have a historic theme to the last photo contest. Something that was old or it wasn't just something that we did anything with. It has to be historic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just worry if we narrow it too much, people might not know right. what it is and then mm -hmm. be like, oh, we can't count your photo mm -hmm. because that's not the right. specific right. thing we were right. asking for, so rather than just mm -hmm. being like a historic structure. Much easier to comprehend. Yeah. So I'm going to be, if we decide to do this, I'm going to be printing off uh, flyers that can go around, um, say, um, either on campus or public places to advertise it. Um, also, it's going to be run through the City Preservation Instagram page, um, which has several hundred followers, which is OK. It's not substantial. Uh, so I think that's a good point um, that we want to cast a wide net. Can we put it in the paper? Is that a possibility, or? I think we could. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we can put it in the paper. Um, obviously, the paper has limited reach mm -hmm. at this time, but we will. Hey, I read it every day. Well, would the city accounts also publish it too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we've also talked about uh, going to other departments, um, like, or groups like the Arts Commission to see if, you know, uh, they'd be willing to help out with any outreach. Well, and if you could talk mm -hmm. to the Parks Department, get into some of their facilities and oh, stuff, yeah. that'd be a lot of eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know partner institutions will help promote it as well. So. Well, that's mm -hmm. great. All right. Okay. Well, what do you win? Um, so last year, or not last year, 2022, um, and this is what I want to do again, um, there are three canvas prints awarded to the top three winners, um, each sort of in decreasing size in order of uh, significance. <laughs> and uh, then other entrants who receive votes are going to be featured on the uh, historic Bloomington Instagram page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. And uh, for putting together an ad hoc subcommittee um, I know it's technically um, chair's responsibility, but uh, if this is something that people would like to email me about, um, I can put something together for that. Yeah, okay, it should be fun and not too much work. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I can look at pictures. <laughs> you have my contact. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. still want the email if we're Thank interested? Uh, I mean, if you want to get in touch in another way, like send a pigeon, you could do that. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we're here. So right. Oh, I'll right. send you an email. Right. Yeah. Um, I can, so I can find a pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Throw this across the desk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, as much as I can have things in writing just because my memory isn't great, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. At least you're not having problems like me. <laughs> That's the theme for tonight. <laughs> it is. Memory. Good. Okay. All right, let's move on to old business. Old business. Um, Go ahead and the ongoing violation at 605 South Fess. Um, this is the Willow Terrace apartment complex. It was nominated um, by the Historic Preservation Commission as a local district in 2018 and approved by city council at the time. 
um, in 2020, a violation was sent to the owner because, let's see if you can uh, make this out, um, the historic uh, ceramic tile roof, which is a character defining feature of um, this Spanish colonial revival architecture was removed and replaced with a uh, metal seam roof without um, the petitioner receiving a COA. So uh, over the course of the past couple administrations, um, several historic preservation program directors um, and some changes in legal counsel, um, several uh, notices of violation have been sent to the owner, um, but no action has been taken yet. Um, Margie and I recently had a conversation with uh, the owner's legal counsel, and I sent them an email describing essentially what, as much as the commission has said so far about what our expectations are for um, what we think is appropriate for this building and um, what sort of recourse they have had uh, for replacing the roof or applying for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, I know this is this is under old business, so um, I don't believe we can vote right now on uh, putting in a uh, compliance period. But typically, there's a 90-day compliance period. Um, the applicant is well over 90 days. Um, so. Do you want me to weigh in here? Uh, I would love for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, <clears throat> when I reached out to Greg Lauer, who's the attorney for this um, owner, he said he thought that this entire thing had been dropped, which I, I said, no, actually, it's not. And um, new administration uh, wants to have a conversation with you about it. We want to get the property into compliance. Um, he said it's, you know, at one point they thought about putting the building up for sale. It's cost prohibitive. Uh, I told him that we were going to come to you guys and give you an update and that if their two options uh, were to put clay uh, tiles back on their roof or to get a certificate of appropriateness from you guys to put in synthetic. And I said that we would be talking about and that would certainly be up to your discretion. And, uh, we said, we probably don't know that, that anybody's gonna love anything other than the clay tiles, but you know, that's just my guess. So um, we told them we were going to be updating you guys at this meeting and that no decisions would be made, but that we would want to have, and invited them to be at tonight's meeting. Um, they said they might participate online or watch a recording. We would like to have them come to this, to you guys and give a report. We also talked about the fact that this building, um, you know, if you know if they are going to sell it, I said we'd like to know if that's you know if that's your intention. If you're going to sell it, what's the appraised price you had for it? Um, you know, just maybe get creative about. We talked even about he wanted to know if there were any grant opportunities um, to repair this roof. And I said, you know, we certainly can want to work with you because our goal is to get this back into compliance. Um, as, as far as the, um, you know, the approach that legal takes with whether it's this issue or billboards or anything else, we do try to work with property owners. We'd like their money to be spent towards compliance with the code rather than fines. Um, this would be a pretty hefty fine if you counted every day that it's been in violation. Um, it would be ridiculous, but um, I do think, that, I mean, they didn't give any pushback. They didn't say that they, they don't want to comply. Um, it's just, you know, the city kind of, I think, quit pushing the issue, and they thought it was fine. And, and it's my understanding there's, like, some kind of material on the flat part, and then the tiles are on the parapets. So, right. Is that right? Right. Uh, the tiles are on the parapets surrounding the roof. The, Rooftop, I believe, as a rubber um, membrane. membrane on top. For which they have received a COA. Mm. Yeah, and they they said they were, you know, they were just in a hurry. He said to try to get the leaking 
stopped because they were also getting trouble from hand about tenant complaints with leaking the roof leaking right so I think the next step is to invite them to come and give a report and see if they want to petition you guys for um, the C Bay or if I don't know if anybody's got any ideas of how we can if there's a it's a beautiful I mean, it's a great old building mm -hmm. and it, you know the, the clay would be great to get the clay back up there uh, but I don't know if there's any grant opportunities or um, really in this email um, as far as I know and anybody who wants to comment can pitch in um, the two things that come to mind are uh, tax credit incentives this is not in the Bloomington urban enterprise zone so it wouldn't be eligible for a facade grant um, you know um, there's certain thresholds um, in terms of both the amount of work that has to be done and the way that it's conducted which I know um, was only bringing into compliance uh, for the uh, rehabilitation investment tax credit um, that's a federal historic preservation tax credit um, there's also the low-income housing tax credit um, which I'm not as familiar with but I have also suggested that um, that could be relevant to the building's use yeah is that when we got into talking about affordable housing right right and that was another topic that came up when we discussed the possibility of them selling the property which what were you going to say I don't think LIHTC is an option at this okay. time the, the new ruling um, for the next set of rounds are going to be directed towards rural um, areas so Bloomington is likely not going to what he told us is I mean I looked up the AV when we were on the phone and I think it's 336,900 he said he thought that when they got it appraised last time it was about 2 million which is a huge difference between the AV and, and that but um, he said he thinks that this property was is really just sort of um, it's, it's not like making a bunch of money in rent he said it's pretty much cash flowing um, and I think that was one reason why they thought about um, maybe putting it up for sale um, look back through my notes um, he said he thought the cost uh, was fifty to seventy thousand dollars didn't he say that no? yeah which I thought was kind of low mm -hmm. actually for yeah. putting the clay back mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. um, what would and the fine be? pardon me what would the fine be? a lot I mean yeah. I haven't done the math but, like, but yeah I mean it's like twenty five hundred dollars a day times every day for, for or years? up to 2500 wow. it would be you know if in every day can be a new violation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so when you do the math it, you know you so could be really you, you could be really so we're talking like we and we years? don't we don't tip it you know it's it's been out of compliance for years now we would not take I would not recommend taking a ridiculous approach and doing the math and saying you have a six million dollar fine or whatever but um but we just want to get this property in compliance ideally with, with clay tile roofing um, but if you guys all that came here and you know you thought synthetic was appropriate I'm sure they'd be thrilled with that so um, I think the next step is to reach out to them and let them know we gave the update and you tell us if you want them here and when you would like them here for meeting or if they want to they can make the decision if they want to ask for a CBA. Well, they'll have to ask for a C of A, whatever they do. Right. Yeah. So it's not but, like, it's but not I like guess the up to them yeah. if they want to. But I, I was CMA. under the impression that you guys already had said <laughs> put the clay back up. Did you guys not at some point tell them to put the clay back up? We, we told them several times, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I don't. It's, I, I guess I, I understand with the new administration <laughs> and so on that it sort of feels like we're starting over, but, you know, I. I this this misunderstanding that he thought it had gone away I'm not buying that well I think he thought it had gone away because the city basically stopped prosecuting him. yeah uh, uh, you know <coughs> I mean, when, I did, when did the city ever prosecute him <laughs> no pro I use that word in prosecuting an ordinance violation sort of pursuing an ordinance violation and not I don't mean a criminal prosecution but when we we when we pursue civil fines or ordinance violations we call that prosecuting yeah, a civil but, violation and I don't know that the city uh, it doesn't sound like again I wasn't here during the last eight years but it doesn't sound to me like the city actively pursued this 
um, in terms of, per, I don't think they find him. Um, I don't think they, I don't, I don't know, Anna, if you know that they took much aggressive action Sam. in getting it done. Sam. Uh, I just want to pipe in. I want to say thank you mm -hmm. for pulling, taking this up. This has been something I feel like I have been beating the dead horse um, to get anything done. Uh, on both this and what 620 South Ballantyne, which we did get resolved. Um, and we only got that resolved. The previous owner sold the property mm -hmm. and we did not disclose that they were, you know, doing anything. They were uh, in violation and we made them put that in as a disclosure. And it's only when the property got sold again and there's a lien on that property that that got fixed and now it's fixed and it's great. Yeah. That said, um, I'm not. I, I don't think anybody on this commission is interested in uh, punitively fining them, except in that we want them to know that we are serious and that if they do not comply, then I'm happy to fine them up to $2 million mm -hmm. and we'll take their building and, and turn it into public. And that's not our mission yeah, right, and that's not what right. I want to have happen and that's not what they want to have happen. But the reason this building got uh, landmarked in the first place is because they came to us with a proposal to rip the roof off and put a big gable roof on the thing. Right. And we're just like, this building needs protection. Right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> I'm sorry. So, I thought, I'm sorry, Sam. Yeah. <clears throat> but I thought they had already started, begun work on that building. They, didn't they get a stop work order on I am, it? I am not clear on that this was way back in the day i don't i don't know what brought that uh it was a contractor basically showed right. up and said we want to put a and i don't know what triggered that but that probably it, the leaking roof it right. sounded like they were having leaking roof problems and the hand was getting out yeah yeah so probably it was a hand violation that sent them to get the coa which we denied and and, and probably with the i'm guessing but probably and you might know this i don't know maybe even before your time. My guess is that when the leaks stopped, the tenant stopped complaining, and perhaps HPC was, you know, they had other fish to fry, and they didn't, didn't pursue it. That's this just has been thing. a fish on my plate for a long time. <laughs> so I've been harassing every uh, program sure. officer uh, and to get on the owner and say, get the roof on and Gloria claimed before she left that she was working with the owner the owner had I don't have this in writing anywhere so it's hearsay at this point or if you want to drag Gloria in here um, that she had an assurance from the owner that they were going to replace it with uh, tiles manufactured by the original manufacturer and they had a line on it and they were they were in process and then we've had churn they had a receipt for some material they bought so the receipt that I saw was for, um, it was for this uh, replica Brava tile, um, which is a look-alike synthetic, I, that's not probably what, polymer. That's not what was, um, yeah. that's, that's not what yeah. mm -hmm. was that's how what it was I portrayed said. to us. Mm -hmm. we, when I saw the receipt, I said, mm -hmm. and that's, you're going to have to get permission to put that on mm -hmm. the roof. Mm -hmm. um, the last attorney that, he, that Greg Lauer said he worked with was Daniel Dixon. And Daniel's not been in the city for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that made me think that the city hadn't been actively pursuing this. And it could be that, you know, Daniel Dixon left and, and you know, between hand and legal, it just didn't get pushed forward. So yeah. here we are now with the conversation going with Greg Lauer, who's been very responsive. Uh, he did say that, you know, this Winnegar uh, owns this um, property. And while this property may not be, cap, you know, just basically breaking even, they have perhaps other properties and other, you know, resources that they might be able to use. Seems like they're willing to have a conversation, and I would suggest that we invite them to a meeting and and see, you know, how that goes. And if they want to apply for a CBA or if they want to. I do have some yeah. further information. So it does look like Gloria was in contact with legal in September. Um, they received a notice of violation at that time. Um, per an update on October 2nd, um, the owners had received the letter. Their representative did respond, but did not touch base since receiving that um, on September 12th. So 
they they stopped responding after receiving that letter. Was that Greg Lauer? Who did that go to? <laughs> um, this was an internal conversation um, about update. Um, I can try and find out more on it, but it looks like Gloria was trying to make contact with them, but they were not responding. Okay. <clears throat> So they know the city hadn't dropped it. They what? They know the city hadn't dropped it if they had communication in September. I talked to Greg Lauer. I don't know who this letter went to. Yeah, and I I wonder if there's a miscommunication between when hand does a cycle inspection for the rental permit and potentially they've resolved an issue inside the rental permit that is very separate mm -hmm. from the historic preservation <coughs> so my thought is maybe they are misconstruing that the city as one large entity instead of the historic preservation commission and the rental permit just a guess but i asked greg lauer to reach back out mm -hmm. to his client and convey what we had shared with him so we can follow up if you'd like them to come give a report or you know we can direct them to take some affirmative action on their part or be subject to fines is there any record of the communication with them to replace the material i mean i think we didn't did sam didn't we give them a directive to replace the material with the appropriate thing yeah. Yeah. do you know when that was by any chance i mean that was Oh. When we when we gave the COA for the the roof, we said at that point we don't want you are not in compliance, you are in violation, and you need to return the original material or in kind. Do you remember like what year that was? Just even what year? I've got it. Two thousand eighteen. Right. Oh, okay. We have a lot of those uh, in our drive. Um, yeah, some communications from twenty eighteen and twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. So, so if, it's, if I, it's been a long haul. Yeah, so if I can summarize, being the new person here without the history, it sounds like directive was given in 2018, and this has been an ongoing issue where communication has, one form or another, been going back and forth up through, sounds like, October of last year. Right. So multiple years have passed with clear directive. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it feels like the time period of discussion has passed, mm -hmm. and there's a next progressive step that needs to be taken. Do you think that next step is their application for a C of A or a fine? Or I would like to lean for a fine. Yeah. And then if they are in compliance by a certain time, then the fine will be collected. I mean, I think we should establish a fine. I think it should be substantial. I think we should give them maybe 120 days to get it in compliance, and if not, we will assert the fine. And I think, cannot the commission also go ahead and do the work, I mean, not us do the work, but hire somebody else to come in and, and put the uh, parapet back up? Yeah, I, you know, I would, I would prefer, if we were gonna do that, to get an order of abatement, but um, I wouldn't, I mean, that would, to me, I would want to file the complaint for the violation. Um, but what I think, and I can certainly issue a letter saying, hey, you've been out of compliance, this is what the fine would be, you know, give a, another no, a notice of ordinance violation, and then say within this period of time, you need to either apply for CVA and get permission to put in some material that is not clay, uh, or put the clay in. Okay. I, what do you think, Sam? I mean, yeah, I, I think the, the, the other point here for me is um, I, I'm not interested in taking their money. I'm interested in getting the roof repaired. And if we find them because they are slow enough, that I want them to be clear that that does not resolve the issue, right. that they still need to fix the roof. Yeah, yeah okay. and again, whether, I mean, this is, true again whether we're talking about cleaning up a property that has people camping on it or you know whatever the issue we try to get compliance with the code yeah. animal control you name it we aren't trying to make money on the backs of people we're trying to get 
clients when I'm yeah. code. I would also just like to say that <clears throat> I think that we have to be careful about further degradation of a building mm -hmm. and um, making it so difficult that they cannot do it, right? That they cannot get a roof on there. Um, so. And uh, they've already replaced the roof. I mean, they, so when they came into us, if I'm not mistaken, they wanted to put a, a, a gabled roof on it. Am I right, Sam? Yes, sir. And at that point, we turned them down, and then they allowed, then we came back and said, okay, do the rubber roof. Okay. And that was back in 2018. I mean, okay. their roof leak issue that, was... That the, actually didn't happen quite that quite, way. Quite, yeah. They, came, they did the repairs, and we retroactively approved the right. rubber roof, right. mm -hmm. and they had yeah. already put the, the metal parapet on there, and we did not approve that. So they, it is, like, leak-free right now. It is. Okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. good. That's yeah. As so far as I know. Issue. Okay. Hi. May I? Yes, yes Bernard. Sir. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been listening to the discussion going back and forth. And I've, forgive me, but um, the gentleman in the blue shirt, I, I can't recall your name. Bill. 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 Mm -hmm. um, I agree with Bill in that this thing has been going back and forth. Um, I strongly believe that we're beyond, I, I do appreciate the effort in trying to work with the property owner to get the property up to the standard that it needs to be. But I think we've gone above and beyond already. You know, we've, he went ahead and did some changes to the building. The COA was retroactively approved. And I believe that, you know, from that point on, you should have understood what the process was. If you didn't know what it was before, I believe he was informed of what the process is and notice after notice and he hasn't made any changes. I know it's six years later and I see we're still trying to bend over backwards to accommodate um, the property owner. How far are we as a commission willing to bend to have the property owner fix something that he shouldn't have done and if he was told over a period of six years that he needs to correct? At what point are we going to impose a sanction of any kind? I believe that we're there. I believe that what we should be looking at is how big a fine we should impose. And regardless of whether he fixes it after the fine is imposed, that fine should stick. Because there should be a consequence for his failures to comply up to this point, regardless of whether he eventually complies. I don't think any fine should be removed if he fixes the problem eventually. No, it's been six years. There needs to be a consequence. And that consequence should continue to mount until he fixes it. I think the only question here is, what fine are we going to impose? And That's it. And I want to I want to make clear that I talked to this property owner and told him that no action would be taken today because I had been asked for an update and I was going to give an update, which I have done. I don't think we would have it, it wouldn't be credible for us to take action today on a fine when I told the lawyer for the property owner that no action was going to be taken. Now this. Sam's email, which I appreciate, was the first time this issue had ever been brought up to me. And it's my understanding from Anna <clears throat> that the city hasn't done anything since October. So to take action to issue a fine in March, nearly April, after sitting on it for months, when the city attorney said no action was going to be taken, I think puts us in a bad position if I have to push this with the court. It doesn't sound like we're playing fair. So I would appreciate it if the HBC would allow the homeowner and his attorney to show up 
and give an explanation and then if you want an issue a fine they'll know that they're coming that day and can potentially get a fine but I don't I as an attorney whether it's a government client or a private client I would not advise you guys to take action when their attorney was told action wouldn't be taken and if you think that's improper that's on me but I was asked for an update and this is not a formal agenda item can we put so, it actually, as a new uh, commission member, I am more comfortable hearing from them since I've, I've never actually heard from them. Um, I understand the history and I uh, appreciate the, the detail that we have, but um, I think, in fairness, um, it seems like this issue was dropped for quite a while. Um, and I think that it's valid to take it up again, but I think there has to be some. Um, time frame where everyone kind of regroups and then at a set date perhaps uh, maybe even the next meeting um, you know it's an agenda item there's a discussion and and then at that point we could potentially do something okay. I would like to point out that it was not the Commission who dropped the ball right. It was the legal department. I'm sorry, Mark. No, no, I get it. They dropped the ball. I didn't mean any negative. No, I know. I'm it's just. It's all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This, it, yeah. It, it was yeah. Uh, yeah. before Margina and before Anna. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sorry you guys are in this position now. Um, and I, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. Um, but I, I think at that point, when we invite them to come in, we'd like wipe the slate clean. And I'm not sure if that's really the way to go. But oh, so. I don't think we wait. I think this fine could, I mean, the fine's still every day. It's still pending. Okay. I mean, Sam? yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, Bernard's statement does reflect the level of frustration that many members of the commission who have been dealing with this for a long time uh, feel. Uh, having said that, I very much appreciate that legal has jumped in and that action is being taken and then I think uh, having the petitioner come forward and give an explanation like I really want to hear what they have to say and it better be good um, because if it's not something that um, you know all, all, all my entire family died or you know some it, they better have a really good explanation for why they dropped the ball because Otherwise, they're just like, mm, I hope it goes away, kind of thing. Because um, our alternatives are, well, I, f I found that like, if we say, please, please, please fix it, nothing happens. And it was only when we uh, put a financial sanctions attached to the sale of the property over on Valentine that we got any action to happen. Yeah. So I think that's the only stick we got. And I don't, I don't like using the sticks, but uh, I'd much rather that they just comply. But if, if it's not going to happen, and for me, it's fairly clear that it, it isn't going to happen without some kind of um, something looming over them. Encouragement. Encouragement, yes. I think that's a very good positive spin on it. Uh, I, would, I, I would like to be as encouraging as possible. Let's put it that way. Renard? I, yes, thank you. Um, just to, I mean, I, I agree with what Sam said and what John said, but there's another issue that I'm very wary of and is creating a precedent. I think we've created a bad precedent over the years by kicking the can down the road and behaving as though we're almost begging these property owners. I mean, we, we tell them that they need to they need to get into compliance, they do nothing. Then we give them another shot at it, they do nothing. We give them another shot, they do nothing. And as Sam said, it's only when a uh, financial consequence is attached that something gets done. You know, to follow on to what John said, it wasn't the commission that decided to give these guys another bite at the apple. We, as a commission, have a role, and it's unfortunate if somebody made a promise that they ought not to have made, or presented a situation to the property owner that they ought not to have presented, but that has nothing to do with the role that 
the job that we have to do. Also, with regards to precedent, I am not a lawyer um, for good reason, but I am very concerned with how we deal with this and maybe other property owners in giving extension after extension after extension being used against us whenever we don't give a property owner the same I don't, the same lackey. Right? What happens when there's a property owner? I think I, I if he comes back in, I'll stop talking. But so Sam emailed on March sixth. It's twenty two days later, three weeks later. We haven't had a meeting since then. Noah and I reached out as soon as we got your email, made the contact. Uh, if, if there hasn't been any contact from staff, and staff can take all the blame, that's fine. But uh, the city hasn't had any contact since October. You, thank goodness, sit, remind, I didn't know about this case. You send an email and says, hey, this needs to be dealt with. We're dealing with it. Yeah, uh, I think now we put you know, our foot on the gas and move forward. Um, you know, I have no problem. I actually was a prosecutor right out of law school. That was my first job down in Lawrence County, and I loved it. And so I'll tell you what, I probably I kept going to parochial school. So, man, I felt like I was on the right side of the law. I also was a defense attorney with Ron Chapman, and I didn't like that so much. But I'll tell you, I, I have no problem. Pro and, I, you know, I've been a municipal lawyer for, you know, 22 years. I have, I have prosecuted a lot of fines and I have no problem doing it but I I don't uh, I, I do think that we sh because I like to make a record mm -hmm. and I want to make a record so that if I have to go to the judge I look like I did a fair process and I'm just new to this case and I think uh, we it looks to me like we did drop the law ball a little bit on our side and so I want to pick it up and run with it but I want to do it right um, because I'm going to have to defend my actions. Okay, Daniel. So on that, John, I mean, I agree with what Ashley said. Um, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't have a fine or anything, but I would like to invite them. And like you said, since this isn't a formal action item, I mean, I, don't, I feel like there's not a lot we can do or should do, just like, like you had mentioned earlier. I, I, I just don't think that's fair that you were going to give an update and then we come back with a fine. But to get them on the agenda, let them know, you know, the fine's still hanging over their head and they have to fix it. <clears throat> but I'm, I, I kind of think, let's, let's move forward. Let's, let's tell them to, to get here and let's, let's go with that. I agree with Daniel, I, but I want to make sure that they realize that there will be a substantial fine. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to think, oh, we're going to come here and... Have them on hand. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm good with that. And and if everybody else is good with having them come and give us a presentation, let's do it. To spend six years, another two weeks isn't going to kill us. Kill us, yeah. exactly. Or right. even four weeks. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. new to this, and this is kind of shocking to me. This has gone on this long. So I think we're well within our right to, yeah, come on, come in here, but then issue a fine at the same time. I, I yeah. more There's than justified. Potential fine to be. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I, I so have a, a bad time. memory of that. One time somebody <laughs> had balloons on a mailbox and legal issued what the potential fine could be for that and it was a pretty high amount for a balloon on a mailbox and the mayor called and said, are you kidding me? You issued a letter that's... Are you kidding me? We look ridiculous that we said we're going to fine you $24,000 for a balloon on whatever. So I have a little bit of a, a, a bad taste in my mouth on that. The other thing I think we need to remind the owners that the exterior of the building is under our purview and that uh, when it comes to removing graffiti, it needs to be done in a proper manner. Because I know there's been graffiti and they've painted the walls and trying to cover it up, which is you know, changing the building some. And I, more so, we had that with downtown. But yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't want to weigh in on uh, 
what the commission, how the commission decides to uh, proceed with this issue. But I think, as in all other matters, um, consistency is really important, and this is when we need to establish consistency with enforcing, um, you know, the rulings that we put in place. And, um, you know, I appreciate uh, all the opinions that were shared and. I think all in all, this would be this has been productive, and I'd like to see this as an agenda item in the next meeting. John, if I can add one more comment, Please, I'd like Bill. to thank our uh, legal counsel uh, for being yes. here. Yeah. I'm sure uh, you gained some valuable information, and had you had that information, that discussion you had mm -hmm. might have went a little bit differently. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, I agree with it being an agenda item for our next meeting. But myself personally, I'm really not interested in an explanation of um, why this hasn't been resolved. Uh, what I'd really like to hear is their timeline, uh, a defined timeline for meeting what the original requirement was. Um, because if we, if we set the expectation of them coming in uh, to explain the reason why, I, I don't care about that. I really don't. What I want to know is, we are now on the same page. Mm -hmm. You now know that this needs to be resolved. This is the way it needs to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And what I want to know is to keep a fine from occurring, what is the timeline? And that timeline needs to be agreeable. So I just wanted to get, get that out there yeah. because I think the expectation that we set with them, um, if they choose to show up, I think they'll show up. I'd be shocked if they weren't, wouldn't show up because, I would. again, I mean, Noah, you were on the phone, right? Where are you? And they seemed generally to, you know, he's, again, he's like, hey, I thought that was all, you know, I thought we were good. And it could be the, what Anna explained, like, hey, we've got the roof fixed, we're good. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll, I will, we'll get it on. When's the next meeting going to be? The April 11th. Okay, so we can, yeah. There's plenty of time. Yeah. All right, good enough. Okay, um, old business, uh, 605 South Fest, we got that covered. Commissioner comments. So, um, I know you gotta go, yeah, Jeremy, I go. please do. I have do. a fifth grade musical to attend, so. <laughs> <laughs> good um, uh, Do we have any comments from anybody from last night's meeting? You know, which was a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. Anna? I just want to say that I am very proud of Noah for being in front of city, city council for the first time, which is a very nerve-wracking situation. He held his own, and I'm very proud of him. Absolutely. I will echo that. Yes. Very professional. I think he stuck around even to hand his business cards to the council members and let them know if they had questions, which is great because the meeting lasted a very long time. I left a little after midnight. You were, what time did you leave, Noah? Oh, I left before you. Did you? Yeah. Like 11. Yeah, it, you know, it was just, I mean, again, I was like, Carrie Thompson, the mayor was there. She <laughs> thought he did, out yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. she thought he did a great job and okay. really acted like a professional. You wouldn't have known it was his first meeting. So <clears throat> I think that we have an image problem with the city council. Uh, and I'm not sure how we can repair that or get them online. I think it would be nice um, or good if one of the council members or all the council members at one point in time come and see our meetings and how they move. Because my impression from last night's meeting is that they think we're off the wall here. Um, and, you know, they think, in my opinion, they thought that the reason we designated or were wanting to designate the park was to prevent the road from being closed. And that was far from how our conversations ever went. Our conversation was to save the buildings uh, that are there and to keep the park as a historic district. Um, and I, I, I'm sorry we didn't bring it up, but you know there was a swimming pool there? The swimming pool? Oh, yeah. First one. Uh, the first one? Yeah. There's. Yeah, and there, one of the buildings was a bathhouse. So, um, yeah, 
it really is there's some pretty interesting historic things about that park and it's too bad that the city council um, uh, had that impression that what we were doing was to prevent the road from being closed and that's not the case I also think they're concerned about oversight of the HPC if they want to put in a bike path or a pedestrian right. path and I think that they worry that they're ceding control over something that is their responsibility. Perhaps um, a work session, a uh, council work session might be in order where, you know, kind of a joint meeting. I know that there, there was talk last night about having a work session with, uh, to talk about the convention center, mm -hmm. and they've got that scheduled for next Friday. Something I could talk to Stephen Lucas about, uh, perhaps to have a work session between the City Council and the HPC to talk about how do we move forward and work together. Now, would it make sense, um, you know, before this, you know, nomination is brought back to City Council, if it is, mm -hmm. um, to have a draft guidelines for the district so we can address some of these specific concerns? Yeah, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I think that's a great idea. Yeah. But I think the work session is a great idea too. Because yeah. if their concern is the path, uh, mm -hmm. trails and paths going through the park, that would be yeah. helpful. It's, it's, it's historically been very difficult to have draft guidelines in time for uh, the, the legislative schedule. Mm -hmm. it, it, we have we have spent six months to a year on guidelines from time to time in, mm -hmm. in neighborhoods, and and it, and the and the feedback. It, this is a little bit mm -hmm. exceptional because <clears throat> there is no neighborhood. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, you know, I, I thought I thought some of your answers last night about about <coughs> if if something impinges on the historic fabric, we'd be concerned about mm -hmm. it. If it doesn't, we wouldn't. You know. As a general guideline, that's fair enough, but it's mm -hmm. not re necessarily reassuring if you're concerned. Mm -hmm. But but it's almost impossible to design to have good design guidelines before the designation. And plus, there's no legal reason to start drawing guidelines and spending the time on it if there's no designation. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a it's, it's you know I mean I've right. I've spent months in neighborhoods doing design guidelines. It's it's just not. Mm -hmm for free, by the way. Right. So, you know, it's just not practical to do it. I, I think, I, I, you know, I'm going to come down on everybody in this room about our image. You have to come to those meetings as voting members. That's part of your job. That's why you're on here. You can't not come. Okay? I mean, I know everybody's got a schedule, but they told the, the advisory members last night that they basically didn't want to hear from us. They wanted to hear from voting members. And there was no voting member there except John. And I'm sorry, John didn't even get up and say anything. It's no wonder that there's doubt and confusion because, you know, people aren't standing up for what we're supposed to be doing. If you don't want to be here, go away. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's demeaning to be in a meeting like that and not have any support. And it, it was a horrible, I mean, that was a horrible meeting. There was a ton of miscommunication. There were people on the council, excuse me, who were vindictive about the things they said. They manipulated the, the disability issue. And nobody, including other people on the council until the very end, said anything to defend the issues that were on the road. Uh, and, you know. Chris Sturbaum was insulted and libeled by a person from the public who is actually on a commission, mm -hmm. and, and nobody defended that until Andy Ruff at the very end. It, it was a, it was a mismeeting of all mismeetings. I, I mean, I've, you know, and I, I totally sympathize with the fact that we had new staff there, and it's a hard thing to get up there and stand your ground, and you know, but you have to be totally clear about what the mission is. And, and, and why you're there and what your issue is and not let anybody take you someplace that they want to go. And that's, that's what happened last night. We got, we got misled and, you know, I thought, I thought they dragged Noah around, frankly. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just unacceptable. And, you know, we've just, I'm just going to say this now loud, but we've just gotten over a mayoralty that insulted us day after day by making misappointments and 
dragging his feet and for all I know telling legal not to pursue stuff who knows but you know it's no wonder we have that, that that hurt our image considerably but this is the first designation I've ever been at and I've been at all of them that we didn't get mm -hmm. and that's that's just not acceptable that, I, I that, suspect, that park is unprotected now mm -hmm. I, I suspect that and I told this to Noah I suspect that most council members had a pretty good idea of how they were going to vote before last night's presentation we have changed their minds time and time again They've all been controversial. It's always hard. Every preservation meeting I've ever been in that's regulatory has been difficult. And what in the past, because I, I don't have the history you have, what were the things that were done at previous meetings to change their mind that wasn't done last night? Having us all there okay. <laughs> in force, we're supposed to be experts, and so you have to present yourself that way. And when they say, when they start bringing things up, you have to correct them and not, you know, it, it's tough. It's hard to do. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard. And I mean, do it in front of a state legislature sometime. It's, you know, it's, they'll do anything they can to get you out of the room. It, but you have to be real clear about what the designation is asking for. And that's what you have to stay with. This is an important historic place over and over again. These artifacts appear to be protected, but the reason this came up in the first place was that they weren't being protected, and the city parks department wasn't taking care of them, and they were broken and derelict, and it wasn't until recently that they've been repaired. And we want to make sure that this, that this stays on board. And historically, we did a street because the street department wasn't taking care of it, and da-da-da-da-da. And I know you don't have that history and stuff like that, but. But that's why we all have to be there. And the street's never been taken care of. What? And the Brook Street has never been repaired. Well, it's never been repaired by with asphalt. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's what they were doing with it. Yeah. But we still have the two historic streets over over on campus yeah. that are brick and have not been restored yet. Yeah. That are designated. Okay. Well, I would yeah, mention that. But I completely appreciate your position and being new, I didn't realize that we would have an opportunity to speak. So I took the one email that we received, I saw one, maybe there were more and I missed some, that we had the opportunity to observe. So perhaps there's just a miscommunication. Um, I didn't realize I was expected to be there. Well, excepting the few new members, there are other people you know, who've been here for quite a while. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, I, it's, it's just part of the deal. Uh, frankly, uh, something that frustrated me is just sort of a basic misunderstanding of what historic preservation uh, legislation is and what it does. This is something that Duncan spoke to at the meeting about what exactly the National Register means and how that relates to but differs from local designation. and. I'm not sure um, when would be <laughs> a good opportunity to sort of clarify that to people, um, how we get that across. But time and time again, sort of regardless of where you work, if you're working in historic preservation, there's just a lot of uh, common misconceptions that people just don't, by and large, understand. Well, that's, that's sort of what I mean about you have to really be clear about the message. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as soon as you see it going there, you have to, you have to stop. When they started getting into that National Register thing, mm -hmm. the reason that I came up was I, I could see it getting more confused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's only, there's only really one or two right answers. Now, I'm not right. saying it's not a much more complicated issue than mm -hmm. that, but for the purposes of last night, we don't want to make it worse, we want to make it better. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just have to be strong, I guess, and say, say what so. And, say, and you have to say sometimes, no, you don't understand. That's, that's not what, you know, and I know it's difficult and it appears rude and, but you know, the issue is, is, is there and that, that's, the world's a tough place to act in. I mean, you just have to be ready to do it. And I, I you know, it, it feels like we have the support of legal, we have yeah, the support of Anna's department and stuff like that, but the commission is here because of legislation that we got passed by the city council mm -hmm. to, do a, to do a very specific job. Yeah. And and they need to be reminded of that. 
Yeah, I, I, I do think that uh, they there was a feeling like I don't want, I, a council member don't want to cede my control over these issues to a board or commission. I think that's where a work session might be helpful to remind everybody, look, yeah. this state law allows you to create a commission. You did create a commission. You know, I, I tried to say, hey, local action matters, right? We've been talking about that all night long, that local action matters, whether it's, you know, local action on the conflict, uh, you know, Gaza or the, you know, the they voted on something, you know, the LEAP issue that doesn't directly yeah. impact our water source. But I think a work session to sort of mm -hmm. have, it might be a better format to have some of the, because it's real hard when you're at a podium and they're at a panel, I think this kind yeah, of environment might I, be better. I agree with you, but I, I, I still think some of that, some of that's, those arguments from the council were specious. I mean, mm -hmm. they know, <laughs> they know more about it than if they, they were letting on to some extent. And the idea that somebody would say to us that we're not elected officials, so we don't have any business making decisions for the city, the mm -hmm. correct answer for that is, hey, excuse me, but the people who run this city, none of them are elected. Mm -hmm. They're all paid staff. You, you know, you, you nine and the mayor, that's it. The rest of us are doing the work. I mean, you just have to say that to them because you don't, you can't let them make you, you know, denigrate your role, or you just give up your authority. I mean, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going on and on, but I was really annoyed and very upset by what happened last night. It got away from us, and there's no excuse for it. It's our own fault. That's what I'm saying. We, we need to be on point. Would you like me to talk to uh, Stephen Lucas, who's the attorney? for the council and suggest a work session at some point? I think that would be a good move. Okay. I'll send him an email and talk to him next week about that. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Do we have any more commissioner comments? <laughs> no, Duncan, that's super. I really appreciate your point of views. I think everybody here does. You are the expert on preservation. Uh, a lot of us are either new or do pretty good at what we know, and but I think we, uh, as our commission, we would be lost without you. Well, that's, at this that's, point, I've, I've not been here all along. I've, been, I've come and gone, as you know. So no, you've, you've carried on without me for plenty of times. Uh, well, but but it's just it's just you know it just needs reminding that. We're the ones who want to, if we want to see this happen and we want to fulfill the mission of our appointment, then we have to take responsibility for it, frankly. Thank you. Um, so do we have any comments from the gallery? <laughs> Randy? Of course, I always have a comment of some sort. Man. First question, I, I just have a question in regards to, do we get another bite at the apple on Cascades? <clears throat> I think, uh, I personally think we should go back, but let's wait a while. You have to wait a year, right? Uh, I don't know what the timeline is, but. Mm -hmm. The reason I say that, I happen to be, I happen to have the gantry from the Tucker Stone Mill in my living room. That's right. From Cascades. <laughs> okay. and, and me and two other guys bought the mobile home court that was in Cascades to get rid of it to the city so we could bring the park back into its historic fabric back in the 90s. Okay. Yeah, I remember the when the trailers were down there. Yeah, and the, cat and the Cascades yeah. radio show. So it's been a long term that our previous uh, parks director had set a direction to clean the park back up because, I mean, when I was this big, there was a movie theater there. You still see the framework back mm -hmm. there. It was a drive-in movie. So cleaning the park up back to its a historic basis where we take the <clears throat> pavilions where the first swimming pool was and bring that character back. It was set up as a rock quarry that Rogers, Rolf Rogers had. Mm -hmm. That was its first purpose when we look at historic. So when we look at that historic, the one thing that we have to look at Cascades from a historic standpoint is it's been a park until the playground went in that didn't have a, a constituency. Mm -hmm. And since that playground has went in, we've seen the families and the younger people grow into it. So from that historic fabric, while who legislates what occurs in it is not necessarily who decides, but the fact that it is one of our historic bases has to have that context to look at. So 
I applaud you guys for bringing it forward and trying. And as it moves forward, you know, as Duncan said, when we deal with history, history holds itself in a place that helps define a community. And with those historic bases, we have to persevere in the preservation. And what I would like, and I applaud everybody here, and Duncan, I mean, we've, you know, we've done a lot of history stuff over the, over the years to try to make sure that Bloomington maintains yeah. its character and quality sure have. for everybody that comes in from the world, goes out from the world. When they leave, they have that memory of our community that they carry forward. And the history of it is very important. So as you participate in this and say, to bring those things forward, because this is a community that has been here for a couple hundred years and has impacted hundreds of thousands of lives in how they look at it. So what we do by preserving that history is extremely important. Now, to bring one other comment in regards to it, as we look at these things from a preservation standpoint and trying to keep that character and fabric as we do on the Fess property, while we look at the sticks, let's identify also some of the carrots that we can provide as these owners look at it because uh, a long time ago there was the Bloomington Packing Company which was an industry here you know uh, and he had a problem with the federal the federal department of health the health department and the city from a sewage standpoint and eventually he got all three people together because he could never please any of them and he shut it down which in turn caused additional you know, economic situation and the property just degraded to a point where it becomes de decay. When I hear the issues, historic preservation and making sure the fabric of that exterior is important. We also have to take into consideration as we put in hand and the habitability, that he repaired the habitability. Now how do we help to make that, uh, it's been too long. I, first off, I'm not going to try to you know, say anything of that. But as we look at these things and say, okay, clay tile. I mean, uh, Duncan, I don't know who knows about Ludovicki tile. I'm sure Duncan does. But when we look at this clay tile in regards to it, it's absolutely the way it should go. But because whatever the fabric was, but as we look at it, we have to look at nowadays what the cost factor is in order to do that and the structure, et cetera. So when we do, when we look at these things, not only do we look at how we maintain that that historic fabric maintains and keeps the compliance that we all want, but we also have to say, okay, is there a way, as first thing that came up, LIPAC, historic preservation credits and such, and um, again, my next comment will, I don't want to anger anybody, but even the possibility from a historic standpoint of supporting an abatement that would help to bring that back, because what we never want to see on these, fa these things is degradation and demolition by, de by decay. And as we look at our housing thing in our community as a whole, when we fix the things that cause the habitability, that gives residences places to live. And that particular one, I love the building, but it also provides walkable, rentable space in the core of our community. So when we look at the sticks, I'm, I'm very well understanding that given the time frame something needs to occur. But also, what's the other types of carrots that we, not only we, saying the community as a whole, can help provide so that when you, when you come to these things, okay, you know, it's, when you smack somebody, you need to make sure that you also have the encouragement for them to do it right the next time. So, I apologize guys. I, you know, Cascades is near and dear to my heart, and historic preservation is there. And Noah, I only heard a little bit of it because I'm old. I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you did a great job. <laughs> That's where you and I have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for at least allowing me to comment. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, anything else, Bernard? You got anything? Being there um, in Jamaica? I think, it's, I, I think it's all been said. All right, great. Okay. Um, I guess it's time for adjournment. At least that's what it says on my agenda. Mm -hmm. So we're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>